Hi everyone, my name is Isabella Sisulawati. I'm an ex talent phobia enthusiast with decades of business experience. In this video, I will show you how to create a line and bar chart in Power BI, which look really slick and sexy, displaying comparison between actual versus plan expenses in various IT area. I came across these visuals while producing IT span analysis sample report, which is available to download from Power BI Learning Portal. I will provide a link in the description below so that you can download the PBIX file for practice. What's really cool about this chart is what happens when you hover to the chart, another chart gets displayed, showing actual versus plan as well as historical trend of variance percentages by month. Here are the steps required to recreate the visuals. Step 1. Reviewing the data model. Step 2. Reviewing the relevant measures, actuals and plan. And step 3. Creating the line and stack column chart. And step 4. Adding and formatting data label. Step 5. Creating the tooltip page. Step 6. Linking up the tooltip. Step 7. Adding region slices. Step 8. Send checking. Let's get started. We are now in Power BI Desktop. We have four pages in here. Two are not hidden and two are hidden. If you want to hide a page, all you need to do is right click and tick hide page options. So four pages and let's look at the model. Our data model has one fact table and seven dimension table, as you can see in here. And let's familiarize ourselves with the various information contained in each table. So to do that, go to data tab over here. And when you click that icon, then you can peruse each table and see what's inside. Yeah, I like to do this to familiarize myself with what data that we have. Now that we are familiar with the information, let's also have a look at this fact table. You can see that in the fact table, some lines in here has the calculator sign. It means that it's our measure. So when you click that, you can see that there are DAX formulas being written in here. And this is a personal habit. I just like to understand and review what was being written in here so that you can then use your reports with confidence. Yeah. And whilst perusing the DAX measure, I also like to summarize them in a sand check page like this so that we can visualize and sand check the total amount of values, year to date amount, actuals, LE1, 2, 3, and plan. LE stands for latest estimate, by the way. Okay, so whilst doing that, I just want to let you know that I have made three changes against the original Microsoft file. The first one obviously is adding this check page. And then the second one is I have renamed amount to year to date amount to make it more informative because it is a year to date amount, not just amount. And I've also modified the DAX measure for amount. I have multiplied by one instead of 0 0.3 previously. I don't understand why it needs to be multiplied by 0 0.3. So I have chosen to modify it so that it's just multiplied by one. Let's recreate the visuals together. Click line and stack column chart. Type in IT area. Click and drag to X axis. Type in actuals. Click and drag to column Y axis. Type in plan. Click and drag to y-axis, line y-axis. So we have the plan as line and the actuals as bar chart. And let's reformat the line so that it becomes more similar to what we had before. So click line and change it to dotted and turn on step. Now it is quite similar to what we had before. What's missing is the labels and of course the tool tips. Let's fix up the label first. So click the visuals and then click format your visuals, turn on data labels. Now we have the labels, but that looks a little bit ugly. So let's format the data labels. For all, let's turn off the background color. And then also the positioning, let's make that inside base. So much better. 
click and drag. And then for plan, select series plan. For position, let's put it above the line. So it's now consistently above. That's better. So now let's sense check against what we had before. So it's quite similar, but of course we made it a little bit bigger. But the total is different. And the reason why it's different is because this is currently filtered to Europe. So if we are not filtering and we did select all, for example, now 0 0.29 billion and 0 0.04, let's just sense check that. 0 0.29 and 0 0.04. So it's now looking good. Now, let's move on to the next step, creating the tooltip page. Click new page, go to format your report page, change the canvas setting type from 16.9 to tooltip. And now we have a smaller page, which is available for us to format. Let's have a quick peek at our tooltip page that we're going to recreate. We have a title in here, a text box, and then we have a card, one for actuals, one for plan, and then we have a line chart, variant plan percentage by month. Let's recreate that. So let's start with the chart. Type in variance to plan percentage, click and drag to Y axis, and then type in month, click and drag, to the x-axis and let's make the font smaller in this chart so go to format your visuals and then for x-axis make the font smaller turn off the title same with y-axis make the font smaller and then title should be off as well so that we can maximize the available space and then click and drag like that and then the title of the chart Go to general title and make the font smaller as well. Okay, so we are good. That still seems a little bit big. So I'm going to make the heading a little bit bigger, nine. Okay, now we're going to have two cards, left and right. Click the white space and then click card like that. Make it a bit smaller and drag it up like that and we're going to type actual done but the fonts is really big so let's make it smaller call out value let's reduce the font make it eight and then for the category label let's make it eight as well so that they're all smaller yeah now if you think that it's too small you can increase that maybe to nine or ten Okay, and then after that, just make it really small and create a bit of space like that. And then control C, control V, type in plan, and then click and drag to replace actuals. And we've got our plan. Next, we're going to add a text box on top, something that look like this. And notice that it is a really special heading because it changes depending on what we are selecting. And yet we only have one tooltip page. So how do we create a dynamic heading that can change? Let's insert a dynamic heading for our tooltip. Click text box. And don't panic when things appear to be ruined. This is because we have a very small canvas. So if you want to be able to see everything, click anywhere in the white space and then reformat the canvas temporarily. So we're going to change the type back to 16 to 9. So now we have a big page again. And let's just temporarily type in test in there and make it a little bit smaller and then click and drag that to the top of our tooltips and then after that we can then change back the canvas size so just click anywhere on the white space and then click canvas settings change it back to tooltip and now we can have our test title of a day but obviously we don't want it to be test we want to create a dynamic title so what you need to do is you need to hit plus in there so that we can create a dynamic value that updates with our data. 
And what we want to enter in here is to have a value that changes depending on what fields in our data model. And the field that we want is IT area. So I'm going to type in IT area. And it will give us a sample, which is 1.00. This is wrong. We don't want numbers, we want words. Ideally, whenever we type a field, which is present in our model, words will appear in the result. Like month, for example, will give us April. Or if we type IT sub area, it will give us something else. But why is it then when we type IT area, we have numbers? That's because our field name is the same as table name. So the workaround is we need to modify it. We need to rename that into IT area description. And then that way in here, we can type IT area description like that. And then just give it a second. It will give us a preview that shows BU support. Now hit save. And I think we're done. Let's rename this page to tooltip new the last thing that we need to do on this page is change the background color make it gray change the transparency to 50 percent now when you make it gray then you can suddenly see that oh they're not nicely or evenly spaced out so just use your arrow button to adjust up and down if mouse doesn't work and then just make that a tiny little bit bigger to the right and to the left. And I think that looks okay. No, I think that can come down a little bit or maybe it can just stay the same. Now that we have completed the creation of the tooltip page, let's link up the tooltip to the bar or line chart combo. So go to our charts that we have recently created, click it, go to format your visuals, go to general, go to tooltip, and then in here, select report page, and then in the page, select the tooltip new. And by doing that, when you hover, watch this. And voila, we can see the newly created tooltip page. Now that is quite similar to what we had earlier over here. The only difference being the color that our new one was in yellow and as well as the data labels. We haven't added data labels in here. If you want to just click it, go to format and then go down to data labels and turn it on. But it's a little bit noisy, so I'm going to just leave it off temporarily. So that's it. I think we've got it done. Next step, let's add the sales region slicer. Click slicer, type sales region, and drag it. And then let's convert that into drop down list, which is no longer over here. It is now in the format your visual slicer setting and then change the style to drop down. And then click and drag to the top. And then change it to Europe. Now we have something similar to what we had before. So when it's Europe, 46 million. And then let's just test that in here. Let's make that Europe. 46 million. I think that's looking really, really good. Let's go back to our charts. Let's call it chart. And let's look at the last step, which is sense checking. Now, what can we do in here? Oh, there is a drill down. So click that. You can drill down and then you can go up. Can we do the same thing with our charts? Well, we have no drill down because we haven't got the IT sub area over here. Mm -hmm. So now after that's being added, there is no option to drill up or down. Yeah. But oops, what happened in here? The sorting order, now it's wrong. So let's just fix up the sorting order so that it looks like this. It looks like the 
bar chart with the higher sales or higher spend is on the left. So to do that, what we can do is we can click this three dotted line, sort access based on actuals, and then make that descending. All done. The last thing to consider is if you want to publish this into Power BI Surface and you don't want this tooltip new page to be shown, then remember to first hide this page so that all that is visible is just the chart tab. So let's save this, hit save, and then hit publish. And let's look at Power BI Surface. Let's refresh this. And voila, look at that. That's our chart that we have recently created. And with the tooltip.